from new airports to a coast-to-coast -coast cargo line intended to rival the Panama Canal. We need to stop this, and we will be here fighting. What if I told you the Panama Canal could soon be at risk? Enter Mexico's Interoceanic Corridor, a brand new trade route that could shake things up by offering an alternative path between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Now the big question is, could this Mexican mega project be the final nail in the Panama Canal's coffin? In this video, we'll dive into how this emerging route might just kill the Panama Canal's dominance The Panama Canal's Global Significance The Panama Canal is far more than a simple shortcut. It's one of the world's most essential trade arteries. Before the canal opened in 1914, ships going between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans had no choice but to take the long, treacherous route around the southern tip of South America. This journey was full of dangers, from unpredictable storms to the infamous Cape Horn, where violent waves could capsize ships. Imagine traveling an extra 8,000 miles just to get from one ocean to the other. By creating a shortcut across the narrowest part of Central America, the Panama Canal turned that long haul into a quick 10-hour transit, transforming global shipping forever. Today, the canal handles about 5% of the world's total trade volume, making it an irreplaceable component of international commerce. For the United States alone, around 40% of containerized goods travel through the canal. Picture massive ships loaded with everything from cars and appliances to coffee and bananas, all relying on this 8-2 kilometers waterway. The canal generates billions of dollars in revenue each year, which not only boosts Panama's economy but also supports thousands of jobs. It's a national treasure for Panama and a powerful symbol of engineering ingenuity. As global trade continues to grow, so does the canal's importance. This marvel of infrastructure isn't just a shortcut, it's a cornerstone of the global economy, allowing businesses to get goods from one part of the world to another quickly and efficiently. Without it, international shipping would be slower, pricier, and much more challenging. The Panama Canal is a true testament to human innovation and has earned its place as one of the most crucial man-made structures on Earth. Before we dive in, take a look at this image. It shows a cargo ship being transported by a plane, but not in the way you would think. However, no news site seems to report this incident. There is a high probability that this is a hoax or a clever meme, what are your thoughts on this? The Engineering Marvel of the Panama Canal Building the Panama Canal was no easy feat. It was one of the most ambitious engineering projects in history. Starting in the early 1900s, this monumental task took over a decade and involved more than 75,000 workers facing intense challenges. The builders had to tackle dense rainforests, swamps, and treacherous mountains. To make matters worse, diseases like malaria and yellow fever claimed thousands of lives. The struggle was immense, but the end result was nothing short of amazing – an intricate lock system that lifts ships up and over the rugged terrain of Panama. Instead of digging a canal straight through at sea level, engineers decided to build a series of locks, which are like giant water elevators. These locks lift ships 26 meters above sea level to reach Gatun Lake, an artificial lake created by damming the Chagres River. From there, ships sail across the lake and are then lowered back down to the ocean on the other side. This design was revolutionary at the time and still operates today. Each lock chamber fills with 101,000 cubic meters of water, enough to fill an Olympic-sized pool 40 times over, all powered by gravity. But the canal's construction came with a cost. Thousands of workers lost their lives, and the landscape of Panama was forever changed. Entire communities were relocated, and ecosystems were altered as the canal took shape. Despite the sacrifices, the canal endures as a masterpiece of engineering, proving that, with determination and ingenuity, humans can overcome even the most formidable challenges. The Panama Canal is truly a wonder of the modern world and stands as a tribute to the resilience of human spirit and innovation. Panama Canal's Role in Global Trade The Panama Canal is one of the busiest and most essential trade routes globally. 
Each year, it sees more than 14,000 ships pass through, carrying an incredible 300 million tons of cargo. Imagine all those containers packed with goods, everything from smartphones and electronics to agricultural products and raw materials, moving across oceans to meet the demands of businesses and consumers worldwide. Without this canal, shipping would be slower and more expensive, impacting the availability and price of countless goods we use daily. For the United States, the canal is especially critical. It connects shipping routes between the East and West Coast, as well as trade with Asia, Europe, and Latin America. Around 5% of global trade moves through the Panama Canal, which may seem small, but is massive when considering the scale of global commerce. In 2016, Panama completed a significant expansion, adding new locks to accommodate much larger ships, known as New Panamax vessels. These colossal ships carry thousands of containers each, doubling the canal's capacity and keeping it relevant in an era where bigger is better. The expansion was a true game changer. It allowed Panama to compete with other routes and kept it essential to modern global trade. As the world's needs evolve, the canal continues to adapt, proving that it's not just a historical marvel, but an ever-evolving infrastructure. By facilitating trade, the canal plays a vital role in stabilizing supply chains, supporting economies, and helping businesses stay competitive. The Panama Canal remains a cornerstone of international trade and will likely be so for years to come. Current Threats Facing the Panama Canal Today, the Panama Canal faces one of its most significant challenges yet climate change. Rising global temperatures are causing unusual weather patterns, including more frequent and intense droughts. The canal relies heavily on fresh water from Gatun Lake to operate its locks, which lift and lower ships across Panama's mountainous terrain. However, with less rainfall, the lake's water levels are dropping at an alarming rate. In October 2023, Panama saw 41% less rainfall than normal, causing Gatun Lake to fall by nearly 6 feet. This is a serious issue, as the canal needs a steady water supply to keep ships moving. Fewer ships passing through the canal has serious economic consequences. With limited capacity, wait times for ships have increased dramatically. Some vessels are forced to wait as long as 18 days, or pay hefty fees to bypass the line. These delays have a ripple effect, leading to higher shipping costs and slower delivery times. As the canal struggles to maintain its typical flow of ships, businesses worldwide feel the impact. Higher shipping costs often translate into higher prices for consumers, affecting everything from electronics to food items. The water shortage crisis has even led some ships to consider alternate routes, like the hazardous journey around Cape Horn. While this option is far from ideal, it highlights the gravity of the canal's current situation. If drought conditions continue or worsen, the Panama Canal may face an uncertain future as a primary trade route. Climate change is putting pressure on this vital waterway, raising urgent questions about how it can continue to operate and maintain its essential role in global trade. The Rise of Mexico's Interoceanic Corridor Mexico's Interoceanic Corridor is an ambitious project with its eyes on the prize, creating a powerful trade route that can compete with the Panama Canal. The corridor aims to connect the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans through southern Mexico, offering a land-based alternative for global trade. This strategic plan focuses on revitalizing an old railway system to provide an efficient, cost-effective route for transporting goods across continents. Mexico's government has poured resources into this project, investing in everything from new railways to high-tech logistics facilities. The railway revitalization is at the heart of the Interoceanic Corridor. Mexico is upgrading its century-old railway tracks, which had once played a vital role in trade but were abandoned over the years. The plan includes laying down modern rail lines that can support faster trains, allowing cargo to travel the three kilometers route between the two coasts in just six hours. Alongside this, Mexico is building new ports, warehouses, and industrial parks at key locations along the route, turning the corridor into a comprehensive trade hub. These upgrades are designed to handle large volumes of cargo with efficiency and speed. The project has received over $4.5 billion in funding from Mexico's government and international investors, who are betting big on its economic 
economic potential. Mexico hopes this corridor will boost the local economy, create jobs, and position the country as a key player in global trade. If successful, the interoceanic corridor could transform Mexico's economy by attracting more shipping traffic and sparking new business opportunities. This project is more than just a railway. It's a gateway to a brighter economic future for Mexico. Comparing the Panama Canal and the Interoceanic Corridor The Panama Canal and Mexico's Interoceanic Corridor each offer unique advantages, but they serve different needs. The Panama Canal provides a direct waterway, allowing ships to cut through Central America and save time, fuel, and costs. Ships navigate through the canal's lock system, which takes around 8 to 10 hours. However, this route depends heavily on water, and droughts have started to limit its capacity, causing delays and higher costs. In contrast, the Interoceanic Corridor is a land-based route using trains to transport cargo between the Atlantic and Pacific coasts. While it might not have the same capacity as the canal, it offers a reliable alternative during water shortages. When it comes to speed, the Panama Canal has an edge for ships already en route, as they don't need to unload their cargo. However, if a ship has to wait days in line, Mexico's corridor could be faster, taking only six hours for cargo to cross on trains. This difference makes the corridor an appealing backup option. On fuel savings, the canal wins again, as ships don't need to reload onto trains. Yet the corridor's trains are more fuel efficient than sailing around South America, making it a good middle ground for specific routes. Environmentally, the canal is starting to show its vulnerability. It relies on vast amounts of fresh water from Gatun Lake, and climate change is challenging its sustainability. Meanwhile, the interoceanic corridor doesn't rely on water, making it more resilient to drought. While both projects have their environmental impacts, Mexico's corridor may prove more adaptable in the long run. The two routes can work together, offering options that meet various shipping needs. Historical Context – Attempts at Transoceanic Connections Before the Panama Canal and Mexico's Interoceanic Corridor, visionaries and engineers had already dreamed of connecting the Atlantic and Pacific. History is full of ambitious projects that tried, and often failed, to create shortcuts between the oceans. One of the earliest ideas came from the French in the late 1800s. French engineer Ferdinand de Lesseps, who successfully built the Suez Canal in Egypt, wanted to repeat his success in Panama. However, Panama's dense jungles, mountainous terrain, and tropical diseases made the project a nightmare. Workers faced deadly conditions. Leg of each iron bedstead in a cup of water, and that's where the mosquitoes bred. And after years of struggle, the French effort collapsed, leading to bankruptcy. In Mexico, similar dreams emerged. During the late 1800s, President Porfirio Diaz saw the economic potential of a railway across the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. The railway was completed in 1907, connecting the ports of Salina Cruz and Coatzacoalcos. For a few years, it was successful, moving goods between the two coasts and boosting the local economy. But its golden era didn't last. Political instability and the Mexican Revolution disrupted operations, and in 1914 the Panama Canal opened, offering a faster and more convenient option for cargo ships. These early attempts laid the groundwork for today's projects. The failures taught valuable lessons about the harsh conditions of Central America and the importance of careful planning. Both the Panama Canal and Mexico's Interoceanic Corridor draw inspiration from these historical efforts, but with modern technology and a better understanding of the region's challenges, they're better equipped to succeed. Challenges of Building in Panama and Mexico Building a transoceanic route in Central America isn't for the faint-hearted. Panama and Mexico both have unique geographic and environmental challenges that make construction difficult. Panama's landscape, for instance, is a dense tropical jungle with frequent rainfall, leading to landslides and flooding. During the construction of the Panama Canal, workers had to dig through rugged mountains and muddy terrain, which slowed down progress. Every time you'd cut something, it's like digging digging a foundation for a house in mud. Mexico's Isthmus of Tehuantepec faces its own issues. Its terrain is flatter but prone to hurricanes and strong winds, which can damage infrastructure and disrupt transportation. The health hazards were another major challenge in both projects, 
In Panama, tropical diseases like malaria and yellow fever decimated the workforce. The French attempt in the 1880s failed partly because workers were dying at alarming rates, with hundreds succumbing every month. I felt like I'd go back home, but it wasn't so easy to do that. The U.S. eventually managed to control these diseases by implementing strict sanitation measures, which helped them complete the canal. In Mexico, workers faced similar health risks, though modern medicine and better working conditions have helped reduce these dangers today. Both projects have adapted their designs to tackle these challenges. In Panama, engineers used a lock system instead of a sea-level canal to handle the mountainous terrain. In Mexico, the corridor focuses on rail, which can withstand rougher conditions than a canal might. The interoceanic corridor also includes modern ports and highways to handle extreme weather. These adjustments show how both projects are designed not just to meet engineering needs, but to survive the elements. In the end, they highlight the creativity and resilience required to overcome nature's obstacles. Modernizing infrastructure for today's demands. To make the Interoceanic Corridor a powerful competitor in global trade, Mexico is pulling out all the stops with modern infrastructure upgrades. With today's technological advancements, the corridor is set to be faster, smarter, and more efficient than ever before. Mexico's plan includes building state-of-the-art ports with the latest loading technology. Imagine huge cranes smoothly lifting containers from ships to trains in minutes, reducing delays and saving valuable time. These high-tech ports will be equipped with automated systems that keep everything moving seamlessly. But that's not all. Mexico is also boosting the speed of its rail network to meet modern demands. The corridor's upgraded trains will zip across the 300 kilometers route between the Pacific and Atlantic in just six hours, a big improvement over the past. Increasing the speed of rail transportation is a game-changer for trade efficiency. Faster transport means goods reach their destinations more quickly, which is a major win for businesses that rely on fast delivery. This improvement makes Mexico's route even more attractive to shippers looking to avoid Panama Canal delays. From new airports to a coast-to-coast -coast cargo line intended to rival the Panama Canal. Logistical support is another crucial element. Mexico plans to establish a network of warehouses and industrial parks along the corridor to store and process goods. This setup allows companies to quickly handle inventory, making the corridor a one-stop shop for global trade. With these infrastructure upgrades, Mexico's interoceanic corridor isn't just a route, it's a full-fledged logistics hub that promises to revolutionize trade efficiency. Thanks to modern technology, the corridor is stepping up to meet today's fast-paced global demands. The Strategic Importance of the Pacific Atlantic Connection The Pacific Atlantic Connection is one of the world's most important trade routes, and it's not hard to see why. Linking the two oceans allows goods to flow smoothly between Asia, the Americas, and Europe. This connection saves shipping companies thousands of miles and millions of dollars, making it critical for global trade. The Panama Canal has held this role for over a century, but with climate change and overcrowding, the world is looking at alternatives, like Mexico's interoceanic corridor. If successful, Mexico's route could shift the geopolitics of international shipping. As the interoceanic corridor rises, it could reduce the dependency on the Panama Canal, giving shippers more options. Imagine a future where cargo can smoothly switch between routes based on cost, speed, or weather. This flexibility is invaluable, especially in a world with fluctuating fuel prices and unpredictable climate patterns. Mexico could play a bigger role in international trade, making it a stronger economic force in the region. The corridor's benefits aren't just for Mexico. Central America as a whole could see positive effects. New trade routes mean more opportunities for neighboring countries to join in the economic boom. Mexico's route could also bring down shipping costs for businesses across North and South America, enhancing regional trade. Ultimately, the Pacific Atlantic connection is more than a shortcut. It's a gateway to economic growth and regional influence, putting Mexico in a prime position to reap the rewards of international trade. Economic and Social Impact of the Corridor on Mexico Mexico's interoceanic corridor is more than an infrastructure project, 
It's a potential game changer for the country's economy and social landscape. By creating a new trade route, the corridor could generate thousands of jobs. From construction work to long-term logistics and maintenance positions, this boom in job opportunities is expected to uplift the local economy, providing a steady income for families in the region. With higher employment rates, communities around the corridor could see an improvement in living standards and overall quality of life. The corridor's social impact goes beyond just jobs. Towns along the route are likely to transform as well. With increased trade and movement, small towns could grow into bustling economic hubs. Businesses catering to transportation, warehousing, and logistics could pop up, bringing even more jobs and services to the area. Schools, healthcare facilities, and housing may also improve as the region experiences this economic boost. In many ways, the Inter-Oceanic Corridor is like a seed that could help communities flourish and bring long-term development to southern Mexico. Future urbanization is also on the horizon. As the corridor develops, infrastructure like roads, airports, and industrial parks will spring up, making the area more connected and accessible. This development could encourage other industries to invest in the region, fostering more economic diversity. Mexico's government sees this corridor as a stepping stone to modernize and grow the region, turning southern Mexico into a vibrant part of the national economy. The corridor is more than a trade route. It's a pathway to prosperity for the communities that surround it. Potential Pitfalls and Risks of Mexico's Corridor While the Interoceanic Corridor promises big benefits, it's not without its challenges. First up, funding. Building a 300 kilometers trade route with new ports, railways, and infrastructure isn't cheap. Mexico has already invested billions, but keeping the project on track requires a steady flow of funds. Budget overruns are common in large-scale projects, and unexpected expenses could strain Mexico's finances. Plus, the corridor's success depends on political support. If future governments don't prioritize the project, it could face setbacks or even stall altogether. Environmental concerns also loom large. The corridor crosses some ecologically sensitive areas, including tropical forests and wetlands. Construction and increased traffic could harm local ecosystems and threaten wildlife. Mexico needs to balance economic ambitions with environmental responsibility, which means investing in sustainable practices and environmental protections. Failing to do so could spark backlash from environmental groups and harm the corridor's reputation. Then, there's the challenge of modernizing an old railway. Revamping century-old tracks and infrastructure is no small feat. The corridor must meet modern safety standards and handle today's heavy cargo loads. Mexico plans to tackle this by implementing advanced technology and durable materials, but retrofitting old infrastructure comes with its own set of hurdles. In the end, Mexico's interoceanic corridor faces an uphill battle. However, with careful planning, steady funding, and a focus on sustainability, Mexico could overcome these risks and bring this ambitious project to life, opening a new chapter in global trade. Implications for Global Trade and the Supply Chain Mexico's interoceanic corridor could have a big impact on global trade and supply chains. Right now, the Panama Canal is the primary route for ships crossing between the Atlantic and Pacific. But with rising delays due to climate-related water shortages, having a second route could be a game-changer. By giving shippers an alternative, Mexico's corridor could help keep goods moving even when the Panama Canal gets congested. It's like having an extra lane on a busy highway, making sure there's always a way through. Financially, this alternative route could save shipping companies a lot of money. Fewer delays mean lower costs for fuel and storage, and faster delivery times mean more efficient operations. For companies, these savings can add up quickly. For example, if a shipment of electronics gets delayed, it can cost thousands in extra fees. An alternative route reduces these risks, making shipping smoother and cheaper. Lower costs for shipping companies can also mean lower prices for consumers, so your next smartphone or tablet could end up costing a little less. Improved shipping efficiency has a ripple effect on consumer prices. When goods move quickly and smoothly across oceans, the whole supply chain benefits. Faster shipping reduces warehousing needs and lowers storage costs. When companies save money, they're more likely to pass those savings on to consumers. In this way, Mexico's corridor isn't just about moving cargo. It's about making the global economy more efficient and resilient. 
creating benefits that can reach people all around the world. Could Mexico's corridor really rival the Panama Canal? Mexico's interoceanic corridor has a lot of potential, but can it truly rival the Panama Canal? The two routes may not need to compete directly. Instead, they could work together, providing shippers with options. During droughts or high traffic times at the Panama Canal, the corridor could step in as a reliable backup. This teamwork could help stabilize global trade, reducing congestion and delays. By offering an alternative, Mexico's route adds flexibility to the global shipping network, making it easier for companies to choose the best route based on their needs. Still, the corridor has its limitation. While it's fast and efficient, it doesn't handle the same massive volume as the Panama Canal. The canal is built to accommodate huge container ships carrying thousands of containers, while the corridor relies on trains that can't carry as much cargo at once. This difference in scale means the corridor can't fully replace the canal. However, for smaller shipments or when speed is essential, Mexico's route offers a valuable alternative. It might not be the main player, but it's a strong supporting act. Looking forward, Mexico's corridor could play a growing role in global trade. As shipping demands increase and climate change continues to impact waterways, having additional routes will become more important. Mexico's corridor may not dethrone the Panama Canal, but it can establish itself as a key component in the global supply chain. It's not about competition. It's about cooperation to keep the world's goods moving smoothly. Lessons from the Panama Canal for Future Projects The Panama Canal is a treasure trove of lessons for modern infrastructure projects. Building it took immense effort, creativity, and resilience. From battling deadly diseases to overcoming rugged terrain, the canal's construction showed the world what humans can achieve when they're determined. One big takeaway is that large projects require adaptability. The U.S. engineers, for example, had to change the original design from a sea-level canal to a lock-based system, which worked better with Panama's geography. This flexibility was essential to their success. The canal also teaches us the importance of environmental consideration. When Gotten Lake was created, it transformed the landscape and altered ecosystems. Modern projects need to balance infrastructure goals with ecological protection. Environmental awareness has grown significantly since the canal's construction, but the need for careful planning remains. As we build new routes, ports, and transportation systems, it's vital to learn from the past and ensure sustainable development. Climate change is another factor that future projects can't ignore. The Panama Canal's current drought crisis shows how vulnerable infrastructure can be to environmental changes. Future projects should be designed with resilience in mind, incorporating strategies for managing climate risks. Whether it's water-saving technology or climate-resistant materials, adapting to a changing world is essential. The Panama Canal stands as a monument to human ingenuity, but it also reminds us that infrastructure needs to evolve to meet the challenges of tomorrow. Future of Transoceanic Transport and Global Infrastructure the future of transoceanic transport is exciting and packed with technological advancements. Imagine autonomous ships that navigate themselves across oceans, powered by AI. These smart ships are already being tested and could one day transform shipping by reducing human error and making routes more efficient. AI and logistics could also streamline operations, ensuring that ships arrive on time, routes are optimized, and cargo is tracked with pinpoint accuracy. Smart ports, equipped with sensors and automation, will play a huge role in managing this next generation of shipping. We may also see new infrastructure projects popping up. Beyond canals and rail corridors, there's potential for high-speed shipping routes or even hyperloop systems for goods. New canals, if feasible, could bypass high traffic zones, easing congestion. High-speed trains dedicated to freight could further cut down on shipping times. As technology advances, the boundaries of what's possible in transoceanic transport will expand, opening doors to faster, more efficient global trade. Sustainability will be a core focus for future projects. With climate change threatening traditional infrastructure, new transport methods will prioritize eco-friendly practices. Renewable energy sources like wind and solar could power autonomous ships. Ports may adopt greener operations using electric cranes and cleaner fuels. By embracing sustainable technology, 
Future transoceanic transport won't just move goods across oceans. It'll do so in a way that protects our planet. The future is full of potential, blending technological marvels with a commitment to a greener, more connected world. A new era of competition and cooperation in global trade. Global trade is entering an exciting new chapter, with the Panama Canal and Mexico's interoceanic corridor offering alternative routes and sparking both competition and cooperation. While the Panama Canal has reigned supreme for over a century, it now faces increasing challenges, especially with climate-related water shortages impacting its operations. The canal has always adapted, adding new locks and expanding capacity, but with ongoing droughts, it's unclear whether it can keep pace with these evolving issues. Predictions suggest that the canal may continue to innovate, possibly implementing water-saving technologies or additional upgrades to remain a top player in global trade. Yet, adapting to climate change will likely be a continuous challenge. On the other hand, Mexico's interoceanic corridor is positioning itself as a valuable backup. By providing a land-based route between the Pacific and Atlantic, the corridor offers flexibility for shippers, especially when delays or capacity limits hit the canal. Instead of directly competing, these two routes may actually complement each other, offering options that fit various needs, from high-volume shipments to time-sensitive cargo. Think of it as a tag team that helps keep goods moving, no matter the challenges. This new era reflects broader shifts in global trade dynamics. As climate change forces companies to rethink their routes, we may see more diversified shipping paths and a move toward resilient infrastructure. Trade is no longer about just speed and capacity. It's about sustainability and adaptability. The Panama Canal and Mexico's Interoceanic Corridor embody these shifts, symbolizing a future where global trade is flexible, environmentally conscious, and prepared for the unexpected. Call to action. As we look toward the future of trade, eco-friendly infrastructure is more important than ever. Climate change is already disrupting traditional trade routes, so building sustainable systems isn't just a nice-to-have, it's essential. By choosing eco-friendly designs like energy-efficient ports or renewable-powered railways, we can reduce the environmental footprint of global shipping. Imagine ships running on cleaner fuels, ports powered by solar panels, and railways that blend seamlessly into natural landscapes. These aren't just dreams, they're achievable solutions that can protect our planet while keeping trade alive. If you care about the environment and the future of trade, now's the time to get involved. One simple way is to support organizations and initiatives that promote green infrastructure. Many groups are working hard to make shipping more sustainable, whether by pushing for cleaner fuels, protecting natural habitats near ports, or advocating for smarter construction. Joining environmental memberships, supporting eco-friendly policies, or even choosing companies that prioritize sustainable practices all help move the needle. You can be part of this global shift. By taking small steps, you contribute to a bigger impact, helping ensure that trade routes like the Panama Canal and Mexico's corridor can thrive without harming our environment. Together, we can make a difference, one that benefits not just today's economy, but also future generations. So join the movement, support green infrastructure, and be a part of building a sustainable world where trade and the environment go hand in hand. Now here we are wrapping for today. If you want to say anything about this video, comments down below. And for more of such content, subscribe to our channel.